Healthy boundaries are essential for protecting your mental and emotional well-being. But what happens when those boundaries cross the line into control and manipulation? In healthy relationships, boundaries define personal limits and create an atmosphere of mutual respect. But when boundaries are weaponized, they become rigid, unreasonable, and often serve the needs of the person enforcing them at the expense of the relationship's health or the other person's well-being. This could happen both intentionally and unintentionally, so it's important to be aware. Disclaimer, real life situations are nuanced and context matters. Please use your own discernment when navigating such issues. With that said, to shed light on this issue, here are six signs that a boundary is being used as a weapon, not as an act of self-love. The boundary is unilaterally decided. When setting a boundary, it's essential to communicate openly and ensure both parties understand and respect it. A boundary becomes unhealthy when it's unilaterally decided or imposed without discussion or compromise. This turns into a tool for control rather than self-care. For example, imagine you're in a disagreement and the other person suddenly says, I don't wanna talk about this anymore. Can you just respect my boundaries? While the issue concerns both of you, they're using the boundary to shut down the conversation, leaving you confused and silenced. So if this ever happens to you, why not try saying instead, I need a break to gather my thoughts, but let's revisit this later. This approach respects both of your needs for space and the other person's need to address the issue, fostering healthy dialogue instead of creating distance. The boundary shifts to suit your needs. A healthy boundary remains consistent over time, allowing both parties to understand and respect it. If changes are needed, they're discussed openly, but a weaponized boundary keeps changing depending on what suits the person enforcing it. This unpredictability can create confusion and insecurity in the relationship. For example, imagine you have a friend who loves to shower you with gifts. One day, you get into a fight and they suddenly accuse you of taking advantage of their generosity. They use the fact that you received these gifts as a weapon, suggesting that by accepting them, you've given them the right to set boundaries or control the situation. You never asked for these gifts. They gave them freely. Now you're made to feel like the bad guy just for accepting them? It becomes clear that what seemed like a kind gesture actually had strings attached, done to induce some sort of power play. This manipulation, turning their kindness into a tool for guilt tripping, leaves you feeling blindsided and unsure how to act. Their inconsistent behavior keeps you on edge, prioritizing their own needs while disregarding yours. If a boundary needs to change, it's important to communicate it clearly and with consideration for both parties involved. For example, I've realized I'm uncomfortable with so-and-so. Can we set some limits? This way, the boundary is adjusted in a way that's respectful and doesn't leave the other person feeling blindsided or manipulated. The boundary is used as a punishment. Weaponized boundaries often come with an underlying intention to punish, whether or not the person setting them realizes it. These boundaries can distort the concept of self-care into a tool for control and dominance. For example, say you got into an argument with your boyfriend or girlfriend. You might tell them, I need space. I'm not talking to you for a week. Thinking you're doing it out of self-love, but really, you just want an excuse to give them the silent treatment and punish them for upsetting you. Always keep in mind that healthy boundaries are meant to cultivate respect, not tear someone down. If you find yourself using a boundary to inflict punishment, take a step back and consider whether your actions are truly serving your well being or merely creating a power dynamic. Instead, try expressing your feelings directly without using silence as a weapon. For example, you could say, I'm feeling really upset right now and need some time to cool off. Can we talk about this tomorrow when we've both had a chance to think? This approach allows you both to honor your need for space while also keeping the lines of communication open. It shows that you respect both your feelings and the relationship, creating an opportunity for a healthier resolution. The boundary dismisses or disrespects your feelings. In any relationship, both people's feelings matter. That's why a genuinely healthy boundary protects your well being while still considering the other person. But when boundaries are weaponized, one person's well being is prioritized over the others. For instance, say you're going through a hard time and turn to a friend for emotional support, but then they tell you, your feelings are too much for me, I need to set this boundary. How would you feel? Hurt, right? Anyone would be. 
The boundary is set in a way that completely dismisses or invalidates the other person's emotions. Instead of having an open, honest conversation about how you can both feel better, they just wanted to shut you down, making you feel silenced and insignificant. A more supportive response might be, I want to be here for you, but I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed right now. Can we talk about this later when I can give you my full attention? This way, they acknowledge your feelings while also taking care of their own, allowing for a more balanced and respectful conversation. The boundary is unrealistic, but can never be challenged. Think about the boundaries you've set in your relationships. Are they realistic? Are you still open to discussing them? A weaponized boundary is like an impossible standard that you're expected to follow without question. If you do challenge it, you're met with defensiveness or blame. For example, your partner wants you to cut your best friend out of your life, or your best friend wants you to have no other friends but them. Neither is realistic or fair, but if you say anything about it, you're immediately attacked as not respecting their boundaries. This can be frustrating and unfair to the other party. The boundary is not communicated properly, but is expected to be followed. Communication is key to any boundary. Both parties should know what the boundary is and why it's being set. However, when boundaries are weaponized, they're often not clearly communicated or communicated at all. Yet you're expected to follow them perfectly. This leaves you feeling like you're constantly stepping on landmines, unsure of what will set them off next. When you inevitably cross it, you're punished or blamed, even though you were never made aware of it in the first place. This creates a constant state of anxiety, as you never know when you might accidentally cross that line. Imagine you're living with a roommate and you suddenly find yourself annoyed because they keep using your favorite mug. In your mind, it's an unspoken rule that the mug is off limits, but you've never actually told them that. When you finally snap and confront them, they're completely taken aback, having had no idea that it was bothering you. This could have been avoided if you'd simply mentioned your preference from the start. So next time you get upset with someone for overstepping your boundaries, ask yourself first, was the boundary clearly communicated or are you blaming them for something they might not even know was an issue? While setting boundaries is crucial for maintaining healthy relationships, it's important to recognize when those boundaries are being used to control, punish, or harm others. If you're setting a boundary, ask yourself whether it's truly about protecting your well-being or if it's crossing into the territory of manipulation. And if you're on the receiving end of a boundary that feels unfair or controlling, trust your instincts and don't be afraid to question it. Healthy boundaries foster respect, communication, and mutual care. Weaponized boundaries, on the other hand, create fear, confusion, and power imbalances. Understanding the difference is crucial for maintaining balanced, respectful relationships. So, did this video emotionally resonate with you? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Let's start a conversation about finding that balance between healthy and weaponized boundaries. And if you found this video valuable, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content on relationships and mental health. We also have videos on five signs you have poor boundaries and seven types of people you need strong boundaries with. Thanks for watching.